Music producers, today I want to show you how to create your own music producer website with a beat store using a website that I know many of you have been hearing about called ClickFunnels. Let's talk about it. Okay, music producers, so for those of you that watched my interview with Gabe, or if you didn't watch it, go watch it. It's really talking about the importance of using what is called a funnel in order to sell your products, being your beats, your drum kits, and whatever else that you're selling as a producer. It's very important that you understand this because this is the movement of the future. Now, click funnels has been around, and just funnels in general have been around for quite some time, but within a music producer community, because of the success of Anno and because of Gabe, you've seen a a lot of people now starting to migrate their business over to click funnels now I know I had a course called music producer website course that showed you how to build your own website using a website called Weebly now you can still use that but the problem with it is that many businesses are shifting from that old traditional website layout and are evolving into using things like click funnels funnels are great because it's almost like having an on-call salesman that can talk to your customers, communicate with them, get them to upsell and buy different things when you don't have to necessarily be there. You just set the system up and it works for you. Now, the way that I'm going to show you today is basically to answer a question that one of you asked me like, man, how did you design your landing page for CurtisKingBeats.com? Because obviously I moved from Weebly to ClickFunnels. So I decided, you know what, instead of making this into a course and charging you guys for it, I'm going to just give it to you for free. It's going to be really a quick process. I mean, a video itself maybe a little bit longer but I want to show you how I created this website now if we go here to the screen what I want to show you is a refresh really quick you see how fast that loads up it loads up actually faster <laughs> than my beat store at beat stars these things are important when it comes to your customers buying your beats or listening to what you got going on you want to make sure they're not having to spend a whole lot of time not even a few seconds extra to wait for your page to load so i want to show you how i made this and i know it's going to move kind of fast because a lot of you probably are just getting used to this and it's probably overwhelming because it is 97 bucks a month but do not let that defer you if you learn the system of how to use it this is something that could be making you passive income as a producer regardless if you have a big name or not the system is strong so that being said let's go here to the screen so when you first sign up for click funnels there's going to be a dashboard we're not actually there we actually maneuver to the funnels page where it has all my different funnels that i'm using now obviously i'm using this for curtis king tv my membership i'm using this also to utilize that funnel that gabe has been sharing and i'm using it now for curtis king beats so as we go through this tutorial what i'm going to do is go back and forth from my actual coding screen just so i can see exactly which links and things i need to use instead of wasting your time looking for them so Let's actually get into it. So there's a few different pieces here. The page as it is is pretty simplistic, but it serves a great purpose because even people who come here, you know, they look at this and they say, okay, it's sleek. It's a white background, which is something that those of you that are into marketing understand the psychological effects of a white background on your website actually makes your buyers make less decisions when buying your beats or buying your products and so you want to keep it simplistic this is something like i said it looks good on mobile and all that good stuff and i'm going to show you how you can preview that on the back end but so when you first get to your dashboard to maneuver to this page you need to go to click funnels and then click on the funnels tab now we already did that next as you can see this is all my different funnels that i have right now let's actually go add new now there's two different funnels that you can use. I generally go to create new funnel through the classic funnel builder. And then we're going to sell our product. That's what we're looking to do. OK, and we're going to create what is called a sales funnel, which is basically going to create what they call a squeeze page, which is generally used to collect contacts or to collect traffic in order to basically find leads and then create future business based upon this particular page so let's go ahead and click choose that and then let's call this uh standard music producer website okay you don't have to worry about the the group tags right now until you start getting more and more funnels but what's important is that we just take care of this initial page right here so we're going to build this funnel. Now, I already have this set up as a beat page template, but I want to show you how I did this from scratch. And so what that's going to require me to do is to actually exit. 
I'm going to go ahead and delete these other pages because I don't need this. But like I said, you want to get familiar with this because this is traditionally how funnels work. Funnels will send a customer to a landing page. And instead of having somebody just kind of look around and possibly buy in the future, you're not relying upon that. You're giving them proposals. You're making it easy for them to become a part of your system by going through the wide end of this funnel that leads them into doing other activities that you want them to do, whether it's to buy future products, whether it's to inquire about your consultation services, whether it's to buy drum kits for you, whatever it is, that's part of the process. Okay, so now that we're here and we have just a squeeze page, what we are going to do is basically find a template to use. Now, there's many different templates that you can go through. The one that I use is this mother funnel squeeze only because it just makes my job super easy. Uh, it's simplistic. It has a white background like I talked about earlier. So you can go ahead and preview the one that you want to use. But that's the one that we're using for this example. Now, obviously, this lady's not going to stay there. We got to put information about ourselves. But as you can see, look how fluid it looks like. It's super easy. It loads fast. It looks really nice. But we got to replace these elements with what we want it to have. And it's going to look like this by the time we're done. So I'm going to click off the preview and then select this template. OK, so we're not going to go over in terms of how to claim your unique URL. That is going to be for another video. I just want to show you the design and how easy it is once you actually get situated in it, because it took me some time to understand it. That's because I was being impatient and I was rushing. But if you take your time with it, you'll see it's pretty self-explanatory as you move through it. But producers, for those of you that are watching this, you're in for a lucky, lucky treat because you understanding this right now is going to put you ahead of the game as the business and the industry moves forward. While we're here, obviously, we're looking at one page, which is pretty much like a landing page. And the way that we edit this page is going to basically be on here. Edit page. And let's tie up some loose ends first. So one, let's go ahead and tie up some of the SEO loose ends and make sure that this page is not just some default page. Um, let's make up a producer name. Let's just do. Kurt Kai beats. OK, the description. Find high quality beats. Now, this is something you want to want, want to take your time with. I'm just going to throw this thing together. But this is what people are going to basically search out on Google or whatever they use for a search engine. And they're going to find whatever they're looking for. Like if they're looking for a high quality Travis Scott type beats by Curtis King, by Kurt Kai, sorry, Kurt <laughs> Kai Beats. OK, you can even put an image here if you want to. You can change the author name to your producer name. You can use some keywords like Travis Scott. Let's try that. Trap Beats. Now, these are very general. You want to do some research on these, but that kind of gives you the idea. We took care of that loose end first. And once you do that, you can just click anywhere in this area just to get off of there. So. What I want to show you as you go through here, what is a, what is super dope about ClickFunnels is that they make it dummy, dummy easy to edit every aspect of this. So whatever you see can be deleted, right? You can delete entire sections. You'll see it when it turns blue. Like when you go, when you see this turn blue, you're deleting more than just one element. But basically the way they separate things, they have sections, they have rows and they have columns and they also have elements that you can add. Now, these different orange boxes represent elements, right? There's a photo element here. There's some icon elements. And I'm going to show you how to do all this right now. So no need to worry to understand that quite yet. But as we move along, you start to see it becomes more and more self-explanatory. Some things I want to draw your attention to. We're looking right now at the desktop version. So if somebody checks this from their laptop, this is what it's going to look like. But you can click here for mobile and you can see this is what it's going to look like when it's a little bit shrunk down on their cell phone. So there's elements of this we're going to want to change. Um, I'm going to even show you how you can even customize things to look different only on mobile. So you don't have to change your beautiful desktop version. So ClickFunnels is super dope for that very reason. But that being said, let's go ahead and go to the desktop. And the first thing that I want to change is the background. So we're going to go up here to settings, go to background. And then what I want for this background is not this image. So we're going to actually double click where it says background image, the link and just backspace. Now we should have a white background. Actually, we can just make it. Boom. So now we have a white background. 
So I clicked on that and then I basically selected the color or I can go here and go to the right color, go off of here, boom, we got a white background. So that's the first important portion of this. Now I kind of want to get rid of some elements that we're not necessarily using. So the first thing I'm going to get rid of is going to be here because this is all a template right now. And if you accidentally delete something, you can always go here and undo it. So they've made it ridiculously easy to kind of maneuver this thing. But we're going to need all these elements right here from the photo of ourselves or our brand and then actually pushing us into our email, which we're not going to necessarily cover. Like I said, I just want to go over the design. We'll save this for other videos, but let's get to it. So first and foremost, what we need is we want to get this logo here. So I'm going to go here and I'm actually going to change this to a transparent background because this is one section, which is one element. This is this is the photo element and there's the actual background behind it. So actually, let's change the, the logo first just so we can see what it looks like. But I'm actually going to choose a logo that is black because it's going to go on a white background. So these are images that I've uploaded. It's really easy to upload an image. You basically go here or you can drag and drop one and then just kind of load it straight up from your desktop. So I'm going to actually go here to my logos. Curtis King logo, and I'm looking for a black PNG. Boom, there it goes. Let that load up. Now we're going to add that image. OK, image width. I'm going to change that to 500 for my particular one. You can really mess around with that and see what works best for you. But I like to keep it to where it's pretty balanced on the website. Next, like I said, we're going to get rid of this. So once again, there's a difference between this orange box, and this blue box. You want to be careful what you do with things that are in the blue box because they affect everything that it's circulating around. So if we go here, go to background, go to white. Boom. We've already got that. Next thing is the sub headline feature. So we want to add an element underneath this and it makes it real easy. It just says it right here. Add new element. Add the new element. And we want to use a sub headline. The headlines are like these bigger text right here. The paragraphs are like smaller than this. And the sub headlines are this right here, this particular text that you see right there. So we're going to use a sub headline. And in this, we're going to use the same text that we have here. So this is kind of like your tagline for your business and whatever you represent. So this is cinematic trap and hip hop instrumentals. OK. Now, I don't like this space in between here. So what I do to get rid of that space is I click here, wait till I hover over this orange box, click settings, and then I affect the top margin. This is basically all the different settings that are for that particular element. Like I can change the text. I could change the mobile size so I can make it smaller than what it is on the desktop. And we'll go over that in a second when we check the mobile version of this. But uh, I could change the text background. I can change the color of the text here. Um, now, I want to make this actually a pure black. Actually, don't no, leave it as off, uh, but I do want to change the size of this because I want it to look a little bit more professional. But you want to make sure that it's something that is legible. But so I got that. Now let's actually choose the font because certain fonts can change the way that we perceive this. And we're going to look for the able font. Boom. OK, so there we go. So make it a little bit bigger. That's cool. And I want to get some space in between that, but I don't want it to be too much dramatic space. So we click off of that. Boom. Now we got it. So the next thing we need to do is I like to put my signature there. That's just kind of my thing that I add. So let's add another new element. OK, and we're going to add another picture element so image element. OK, and let's actually go in here and look for the signature it should be in here. Boom. There it is. Now, this is obviously way too big, so I'm going to actually start messing around with the width. Let's try 100. All right. Let's try 200. 300. Mm, let's do like 250. All right. I like that. Let's move that. Boom. Already looking good. OK. Now I need to replace her <laughs> with him. So I already have a banner. Now, something that I suggest doing is if you don't know the measurements of it, 
perhaps going here and then saving the image as and then opening it up. So this one is called Woman Top. Now, if you save the image, which you can just hover over the orange box and then right click and save, at least on Chrome, you could do that. We're going to actually open this up and then go into the properties of it. So let's click right click on it, go to properties. And the details say this is 3200 by 1202. OK. So we need to get an image like that. Now, as you can see, I tried to do this. This is a little bit too corny for me. This is the first version of the website. It looked a little bit cheesy when I did it. I was like, yeah, it don't really pop the way it should pop. I had too much around the head, the flat top. I don't know. It just didn't look cool to me. So I tried this one for a little bit when I was going for like a space age type of vibe. And I had like stars around me, but I didn't like that. I was like, you know what? Let's keep it simple. So I ended up creating another uh, banner, which is right here. So this is the banner head. Once again, as you can see, the measurements are exactly as they were for that picture of her. So in order to change this, click over it. And then we need to change this image or actually change it. Everything is, has its own unique link after you upload it. But let's actually go through here. And I think it should be the latest one I put up. So then add that image. Boom. OK. Now, I think I did 500 for this last time. But I kind of like that size. Let me see. We'll see what happens if I try. Let's try 300. It's a little bit too small. Now, depending on your branding and your style, you may want to go for a smaller image. Um, but I'm trying to keep that in consideration. That's a pretty decent size, even though that's like <laughs> huge. We'll just kind of make it that size for right now. Now, the next element we have to add is the actual beat stored. So in order to do that, we have to do something a little bit different. Add a row. And we need a row of one. Now, what this does, it basically dominates the area so it's like another block that's going to represent another uh, uh area of the actual click funnel landing page so within this we can add a new element like we had before which was the coding so what i want to do is first and foremost go to settings and i want to create a border around it so that that white color that's right there for the search bar is separated and so it doesn't look like it's uh, a part of the logo or part of the background it doesn't just blend in too much so for this one, we're going to need a full border and then we can change the size of it to like one X. I think it's what I did. And you can go from there. So now when I put the actual coding, the beat store is going to have now a border around it so it doesn't blend in so much with the background. So that's there. Click on the element. Now go down to custom JS JavaScript HTML. Then actually click back on there again, open the code editor. Boom, copy and paste. Now it should look a lot better. So let's go ahead and save that. And then let's preview that. Boom. Now we see where the separation is. Okay. Now something I want to make sure is that I actually have it fluid with. Yes, I do. Okay. Just to make sure it looks good there. And this is actually not 100 percent the accurate website. We got that section of it. Now let's move down to the next section that we have here, which is our license terms. So we need to create a headline and then we also need to add a icon in there so that it's all accurate. So let's actually go and create a new row, I believe. Yes, let's create a new row. One column. Now we're going to add an element in here. And so for this element, now what we're going to do is we're going to add a headline, like I said before. OK, and we're going to call this license terms. Now let's add that logo that I was talking about. The way that you do that, going in here and finding the element, going to settings and then going to advanced and then going to icon picker okay when you click on that it's going to have a filter up here and so i think what i used for this was like a notepad of some card so let's put note or was it pad 
Let's see if we can find it. They have many different things that you can add here. You don't have to put this, but I think it just adds a little touch of professionalism to it. So you can actually use whatever you find in here that looks good. I'm going here and looking, looking, looking. I mean, I think this will work for right now. This is just sort of like a book. So this is kind of like they're reading the license terms. So there it is for there. Now, the next section is going to be obviously the three leasing terms that we have. Now, in order to do this, it's going to be a little bit of a tricky step. Not too tricky, but you want to click uh, add new row instead of one column. Or sorry, yeah, add new row. You want to get three columns now. So three columns. Now we can add the different license terms within here. OK. And every single one of these represents a different box. So I need to actually create two of these. So remember how I said you can edit one individually or you can edit all of these with this with this whole blue section. What I'm going to do is actually clone this because we're going to put the titles of each license term and then the actual description of them below that. So let's go ahead and go and then put like basic license. Let's go ahead and do that. Basic license. That is going to be a paragraph. Did I do paragraph? Yes, I did. So that's going to be basic license. What is it? Premium and unlimited. So let's do that. So let's do paragraph. We're going to do premium license. And then we're also going to do unlimited license. OK. So now that we have that, we can do different things if you want to, like, you know, add a bold. You can double click on that and then bold it if you want to. It's not absolutely necessary, but just for aesthetic reasons, you might want to change that. So then we have that. Now I'm going to actually copy over my license terms for this next section, which is also going to be another paragraph. OK, same thing for this one. And we're going to change how it looks after we get the initial information we need from it. Because as you can tell, I'm very when it comes to like the style of it, I obsess over that. I want it to look as uh, uniform as possible and as professional as possible, because people do judge you on your fonts. They judge you on your color schemes and all that. And, and when they come into here, I want to make sure they feel comfortable buying with me. So something that's really an eyesore for me right now is the fact that. This 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 box itself is a little bit too far from the rest of the text, so. What I can do is change what they call the padding, which is a space in between. So I can just pull that back and that should show up right here. Same thing with this one. I can change the bottom padding of this one by clicking on the settings for the blue. And then having it right here. Now, you can go a little bit more detail like I did here and create this box and all of this different stuff. It's not really necessary, but at least you know how to do that. Now, obviously, with this, it would be a little bit different because what I want to do is create a background for this and say we do. Say we do red, what would that look like? But you see how you can do that across the board if you wanted to. I don't really like the way that looks, but I just want to keep it in line with the branding. But imagine I did this. So say we did a black for that. And then for the text, we did white. Super easy to edit. So that's good. Now, with the size of this, I have two different options. I can either change the size of the the uh, the box around it, or I can change the actual text. My apologies, y'all. I know I'm becoming a little bit too obsessive with this, but I want to make sure I get it right. So let's get let's change that to like 20. No, nah, let's change that to like right here. Now, we don't have to keep this. I probably would end up changing this. But for the sake of time on this, I want to make sure that I do respect your time on this. OK. Cool. So we have that. We have the license terms with this and we can always change the font to match what we had in there before. So once again, I'm going to select that able font. Right. And I can actually go back in here and change the font size of that just so it matches everything I got going on here. And then once we do this, the beautiful thing about click funnels, we can just copy that over and then drag it so that we have another one of these. So the next section is brand placements. Maybe you got some placements you want to share. So it's important that you highlight whatever it is that you want to bring to the next section. So 
For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and clone this. Because remember, we had the background that used to be a color. But we're going to take this and we're going to use these arrows here to basically push it down below to the next section. So we want to go one more down here. Boom. Now we're going to placements like we had before. OK. And for this one, we're going to change the logo. And once again, you just go into here. Go to advanced and then go here to the logo and then type in something like uh, TV. Boom. I like that. Here we go. OK, now that we have that, let's go ahead and add the actual video. Now, we don't want to add a new element because we actually want to change the size of the video. So let's click add new row one column. And for those of you that are feeling a little bit confused by the process, don't be. It gets easier and easier as you go. Now, what I want to do is add a new element within this row, which is video. Then I want to go grab this placement in particular. OK. And uh, we're going to go here and double click or just click on that region. Go here to video type. Go to YouTube. Then paste in the YouTube link. OK. Now, in order to change the size of this, we're going to have to go ahead and change some margin information. And the way that you do that is you go. First of all, we, we added a row for a reason because we want to change elements behind the actual element. So go to advanced and then go here. And then you could change the side margin. Let's see what the exact number is on our side margin here. Go to settings, advance. So this is 204 dot. Let's just see if we can get that same situation going on here. Yes, it is. 204.75 is what I had to do to get this to be this small. But once it's there, you click save. And then also I want to get rid of this space in between so that my website is not too spaced out. So I need to go ahead and click on this one and get rid of this bottom right here. Boom. Save that and let's preview it. OK, so as it loads up, boom, now we already are starting to see the page come together. OK, so now that we have that element and it's looking good, what we need to do now is go to the next section, which is other placements. So maybe you got artist placements that you want to put in there. So in order to do that, what I would suggest doing is going until you highlight over this until it goes blue Add a new row. And then we're going to put the three placements that I have here on the front. OK, one of which being. Let's go image by image. Let's click another one. Let's go image. Let's click image one more time. Boom. So the first one being. The Kendrick Lamar, which I think is on my page, too. Yes. So we're going to click on this. Add image. Click on this one. And once again, I'm sorry, add image. OK, and one more time, we're going to add image. To. Add image. Cool. Now. Let's go ahead and take this title so we can do the same treatment here that we were going to do for the artist. So boom. So instead of art, instead of just placements, let's just put. Artists. So now we have that. Now, I think I used a microphone for this one. So on this particular element, go to settings, go to advance and then go here. And then type in mic. OK, and I think I use this old school microphone. Boom. Here it is. Now, there may be questions for some of your customers as to who all of these folks are. So it's very important that you add names to it. All right. And then now let's go to settings and let's actually bring these in. So we're going to change the width that these pictures are together. So I like this width right here. It looks good with the website. And then boom. OK, so now we want to actually identify these artists. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to add another row. And we're going to do a three row column or three column, actually. And this should help us. Now we're going to, have to change the width once again. OK. They're going to add a sub headline. Sub headline. 
subheadline. And then for here, we're going to put Kendrick Lamar, Absol, E40. And obviously, like I said, you can style this the way that you would prefer to style it. Now, the same thing can be done in terms of if you wanted to add, say, products that you have here. Like I have a few different products that are here. So what you would do, you could actually just copy this whole thing over if you want it. So we're going to first copy this over as a section because we're going to use the same format to basically show that we have drums. And I'm actually going to only use one drum this time. So we're going to do... Uh, drum kits okay and for this one i mean can you guess what we're going to use for this <laughs> for the icon at least you guessed it drums boom drum kits now like i said we're going to add only one drum kit here so we're going to click actually we can actually click uh element adder if you just understand that there's a difference between this orange and the blue the orange edits the element in particular. The blue edits the section that surrounds it. Does that make sense? So we're going to add another another uh, another row, actually. Sometimes it gets a little tricky trying to find that, but we got it. Boom. OK, so this one is going to be one row with an element in it. Add new element. And that is going to be a photo. OK, and then we're going to use one of our drum kit photos in here. So say I use my drum, big drums, knock volume two. I like that cover the most. This is obviously way too big. So we're going to do like 250. Cool. OK, the next thing you want to do is add a button. So let's go ahead and find the button here. Let's go to button. And let's actually change some things about the button. Let's see what else we got in here as options. We'll do the red one. Now that we have that, now we're going to actually go back here to settings and then basically change the text and say uh, by now or just something that leads them to action. We're going to push this up here. Subtext if you want it, like you can say Big drums are limited time only, but that's on you. So go to set action, double click here on website URL and just paste it. And then boom, people click on that. It'll go to an external page that leads them to the drum kits. Now let's add a border around this just to keep it sort of fluid with everything else. Full border. So the next element is going to be this email element down here. Now, this comes pretty standard. I changed some things, namely the size of the text, only because it didn't look so good on the mobile. And I wanted to make it more fluid to where this text right here is just oversized. It's not really my cup of tea. So that being said, let's go ahead and change that around. First thing I want to change is the actual image. Let's actually upload the image that it uses on this site. Let that load up, add the image, boom. Okay, now that we have that, let's change some of the size of this stuff now. I think I used a different one. Yeah, I used a headline image. So I think the headline has a limitation or maybe it doesn't in the size. Okay, that's cool. So I wanted to take it from being a two row situation to a one row. So what did I say here? I just said stay connected. So we'll keep that same energy going here stay connected what do we use for the text so here i used some of the benefits of signing up to the email list okay then i space that here or to this next or to the uh basically indented it to the left and do the same thing here now i'm going to show you how to put these dividers in a minute i just wanted to get the bones of this done just to show you how easy, how quick it is to put it together. Once you understand the basic terminology, everything becomes so much easier for you to maneuver. So we're actually going to delete this because we're not going to use their email system. We're going to use uh, we're going to use 
MailChimp. What you need to do in order to use your MailChimp is basically maneuver your way over to your MailChimp account and use their code for your signup form. Now, that could be a whole nother tutorial in itself, but what I want to do is at least show you where to drop that at. So add new element. I'm going to pause that, by the way. Add new element, and we're going to go to Custom J, JavaScript. Then we're going to grab all of this, and we're going to drop that coding into here. Boom. So now it should look pretty fluid. Okay, go ahead and preview that. And here you go. The website's already loaded. It's just waiting on the B store now. It's crazy. Okay, so now that we have this, let's do one more thing that I like to add in here, which is adding an element that we call the divider. So click on the divider. And then boom. Now I want to make this divider smaller. So let's go like 50% on that. And let's actually align it to the center. Change this. Actually change it to 30%. I like that. Okay. So it's going to clone that. And we're just going to put the divider in any place that we think it would be appropriate. I usually put that underneath the uh, sub headline sections. Once again, I'm going to add that here. You can even clone this and add it underneath all of these if you wanted to clone this again and just I'm holding down and I'm just dragging it under to where you see this bar go underneath there one again boom right something else to note that you can always click on these images and create a link so say you wanted to lead them directly to uh, you know a YouTube video that shows your placement you can do that super easy same thing with this. If I wanted to lead them to this link, that's actually the sign up form. Let's not do that. Let's go ahead and go here to the button, grab this link, copy it, go back here, link URL. Boom. Okay. So now that's going to lead if you click on that image. Okay. So that's it. We designed everything right now on the desktop. So the last thing we got to do is actually look at what it looks like on the mobile. So let's click here on the mobile preview. Now, as I look through here, there's a few things that are looking like uh, eyesores a little bit to me. So what you can do here is you can actually change them and make them changes that are only occurring on the desktop versions. Let's go back here to the desktop. We're going to go here to mobile. And what we can do is we can click on this. And we can make this a desktop only feature. OK, so you see how that goes back to the desktop. What we did is we won't go here to there. And now that element is missing. So anything that doesn't look right, we can always change it and kind of edit it to our liking. So now that we have that and we took that away, we want to do is kind of bring it back, but only bring it back as a mobile version. So what I would do is add an element. Do the sub headline. Do basic. This is just for those of you that want to change your mobile. You don't have to do that unless it's not looking good. But I do suggest that you do it uh, just to make sure it looks good. And then go down here and then go to mobile only. So now when you go back and forth from the desktop, this won't show up here. See how that's going now? Go to mobile. Now this is the only thing that's going to show on mobile. Same thing. Let's go here and drag this. And we're going to call this uh, premium. Clone that and we're going to go down here and we're going to get this to be unlimited. Sweet. OK, so now that we have that, everything is set up here nicely. Basic premium unlimited and this is all mobile only. That looks good. This looks good. This doesn't look good. So you see how this section is all highlighted right now, just in text. Let's clone this. OK, and then we're going to only going to use one of these sections. Click on settings and make this desktop only. 
Okay, maneuver back to the mobile version. Now you have this. And let's just basically move these elements to where it looks good on the mobile version. All right, let's drag the name underneath the proper artist. Let's drag the dividing bar underneath each one. Okay. And if you want to get rid of any element, just basically hover above it and you could delete it. Now we can delete both of these actually. Okay, so we deleted the wrong thing. Let's grab this to clone it. Let's do E40. Clone this and then bring this here. Okay. And then once again, for every single one of these elements, we want to make sure that we click settings. Mobile. Settings. Mobile, because we only want this stuff to show up on the mobile version so it doesn't duplicate itself on the desktop. Make sense? Mobile. 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 Okay. Let's see how the rest of the mobile website looks. All that stuff looks good. So that being said, let's look at the desktop, make sure nothing's overlapping. All this stuff looks good to me. Okay. Might want to move this back up here just to double check it. Okay, cool. I like that. All right. And there it is. We have our standard music producer website. Save it. Preview it. See how it loads. See what it looks good. Let that load. Cool. There it goes. Now, in order to send people here, you must save, then go back and exit. And when you exit, it's going to send you back to the funnel dashboard. And here is the link that you will be sending them to if you have not already got your unique URL. We're going to talk about that in a future video. But if you click here on the settings, you can actually change what that funnel step is or the path, which is going to be the URL. So we'll just call this. Um, standard beats just to kind of like do something or you can just put beats if you wanted to. And now they can send them to this link right here. Boom. And you can actually change the URL settings here in the settings tab, but we're not going to go over that today. For those of you that stayed and were patient through this entire tutorial, much props to you. Like I said, I had a special offer for those of you that actually watched the entire thing. Now, I know some of you are probably already underway or probably you were pausing this video and putting the elements together. Props to you. I hope your website loads super fast and looks super good. It should as long as you're using ClickFunnels. Now, I know that ClickFunnels is probably not for every producer, especially because of how expensive it can be. It's about 97 bucks after their free trial period that they give you. It's about 97 bucks per month. So it's important that your pages generate income. Here's the thing about it. ClickFunnels helps you do that. It is ridiculous how fast ClickFunnels actually loads up. So that being said, because I know how expensive it is, what I want you to do is this. Go down to the link below in the description and I want you to click that link that basically leads you to a registration form for Legion Beats whole webinar and its tutorial on how to not only use this, but how to use this and make money with the proven system that as I shared before has helped me. So go to that link and go ahead and register because what you're gonna get just in that webinar alone is ridiculous amounts of information in terms of why ClickFunnels works so much better than just your traditional beat stores. This is the future, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope that you get ahead of the curve before everybody else tries to jump into this. So that being said, go to the link below you can check it right here or go in the description and go check it out. And when you get to that website, you're going to go ahead and register for a webinar. You're going to watch that. And when you register for that webinar, don't worry. I'm going to be in there with you because I want to see you along this process and help you understand how important it is that you jump on this early. There's a lot of funnels out there. Some people are doing it right. Some people, a lot of people are doing it wrong. So go talk to my man, Gabe, and get the information you need. Gabe and Anno have a great system that is really helping me out tremendously in selling beats. And so part of that is understanding how to use ClickFunnels, even though 
they've made it so easy. They created this whole thing that I showed to you right now. They've made it to where all you gotta do is just basically plug and play and it's already set up. You just change some of the elements. But based upon this tutorial alone, you'll be able to maneuver it so much better than anybody else who's jumping into the mix of it. So it's good that you did wait to the very, very end, but go below to that link and go check that out and register for that webinar because I'm telling you this information is the wave of the future. That being said, thank you for watching today. Once again, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, like this video, share it. If you think it can help somebody in this life, you will not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. Once again, it's Curtis King, the leading voice of the online rapper and music producer community. Don't have me. Peace.